Hello there, dear viewer. I hope this video finds you well. Today, we're going to be discussing some recent Criterion Collection releases. In particular, two box sets. I have the Chantel Ackerman Masterpieces set and Eric Romer's Tales of the Four Seasons. These are both Region A Criterion releases. So in order to get them in the UK, you have to import them in some way. And I got these from Boutique Home Video, who are a friend of the channel. So to all of my fellow UK collectors who want to get some of these Region A imports, I'll talk a bit more about Boutique Home Video later on. And in fact, they have a Criterion sale starting around about now on some box sets, and they have a whole pick and mix Criterion offer. So more on that later, but let's talk about these releases because there's good, but there's also some bad to mention in regards to these. Let's talk first about Eric Romer's Tales of the Four Seasons. What is this box set? Who is Eric Romer? He was a figure in the French New Wave during the 1960s onwards, and he ended up having a very long career, an illustrious career. He was relevant well into the 90s, still making films, and this set is in fact a series of films from the 1990s. I'm no stranger to Eric Romare. Other works from him that I really like are The Six Moral Tales, which is also available from Criterion. And there is also this set. This is his Comedies and Proverbs set, which is available from Arrow. To sum up his style of filmmaking, he's very much looking at the relationships between people and how complicated relationships can be, whether that's romantic or friendship or familial. His films are very conversational and philosophical, which is quite common in French cinema. And his works are very much something I would recommend if you like films such as the Before Trilogy from Richard Linklater. That sort of film where it's focused on central characters just talking and working through their relationships and their emotions. That is not to say that these films aren't visually stunning. They are often set in very interesting environments, whether that is urban or more rural or by the beach. Something I like about his films very much is even though they are philosophical and quite heavy sometimes in terms of the dialogue and what is being talked about, they are very accessible. They are films that you can quite easily sit down and watch and you don't feel like you're being lectured or you're learning some very complicated new subject. In that sense, his films are not academic. They are easy to watch. And I think this is all encapsulated in the tales of the four seasons because he was making these later on in his career. And I think he was probably summing up all of his ideas in these films. And while I don't think all four of these films are on an equal level in terms of how much they affect me and how much I gain from them, but something like A Tale of Summer is absolutely up there with his best work. So to have it now on Blu-ray is a great thing. So the four films here are all presented based on recent 2K digital restorations. These were showing theatrically for about a year or two before we finally got this disc release. For the most part, these films look great. The restorations, they're great work. I honestly couldn't see many faults with the actual restoration work here. What is at fault here, unfortunately, is Criterion's disc themselves, the way that they have mastered the discs. That's the process of taking the digital film file and putting it on the disc so that it can be replicated and sold to us. That process has not been done perfectly. And the byproduct of this is in certain sequences in the film, particularly in bright skies or in darker corners of the screen, you start to see digital artifacts where there is macro blocking, which occurs when colors in the image sort of block together because they're very similar in tone. And it's kind of a shortcut for the digital compression needed to get the film onto a disc. If a disc has been authored well, this can be avoided and it's often picked up during quality testing before the films are actually released on disc. However, in this case, it hasn't been picked up and unfortunately, there is a lot of evidence of 
digital compression artifacts in the image. Most Blu-ray labels will outsource the authoring and mastering process of their discs. Criterion use a company called Nexpec, who I don't know much about, to be honest. But from what I've seen with their recent work with Criterion, they aren't quite on the level of Fidelity in Motion, who seem to be you know, the absolute best team in the business at doing that process. Something else that slipped through the quality control process on this release is that some of the special features are missing English subtitles. So the French language, unless you can speak French, you're not going to be able to understand. From what I've heard online, Criterion have recognised this issue with the subtitles and are putting in a disc replacement program service for this. Unfortunately, I don't think there are enough people complaining about Criterion's poor compression at times, so those issues aren't likely to be fixed. But do expect some replacement discs for this set in time. So anyway, I feel like I talked a lot about that, but it's important to know that kind of thing before you buy this. It's important to recognise where Criterion aren't necessarily doing things perfectly. And I hope I don't have to state to you that I am a massive Criterion fan. When I mention this kind of issue, it is more out of frustration. It isn't that I hate Criterion or something, because clearly I have about 600 Criterion Blu-rays in my collection. Clearly I don't hate Criterion. But something I would strongly recommend to the team at Criterion if they ever watch this video is have a look at their disc authoring team and their process, because for quite a long time it just hasn't been perfect and you can see lots of issues in a lot of their releases. So beyond those compression issues and then the missing subtitles which is being remedied, it is a great release and just check out these films however you can, whether you get this Criterion Blu-ray set or you watch them on streaming or, or whatever, these films are excellent if you are in any way interested in French cinema. So. I highly, highly recommend the films. Before I get into talking about the Chantal Ackerman Masterpieces set, let me just quickly mention Boutique Home Video again, who I got these Blu-ray releases from. They are a great way of getting Criterion's Region A releases to the UK, including a lot of their 4K discs, which of course are region free. They have a wide selection of Criterion titles and other boutique labels. And at the moment they have a Criterion deal on on many box sets with reduced prices, and they have a pick and mix match offer. So if you add two certain titles to your basket, you get a reduction. So it's worth going to check out if there are any Criterion Region A titles that you want to get in the UK. I'll include links to all of that in the description of the video, so do go and check that out if you're interested. Now let's talk about the Chantal Ackerman Masterpieces 1968 to 1978 set. As you would expect, this is a collection of the films from filmmaker Chantal Ackerman, including her most famous work, Jean Dielman. I've forgotten the rest of the title. I actually have the old Blu-ray here, so let me give you the full title. Jean Dielman, Vantois, Caille du Commerce, 1080 Bruxelles. That was in my bad French accent, but yeah, long title for a long film. So within this set, you get many, many of the filmmaker's works, including her feature length films and a lot of the short films that she made as well. To describe her filmmaking style, well, she was quite consistent throughout her work. And you see from some of the earliest films in this set that the themes remain throughout her filmography. These are films made from a feminine perspective. They are dealing with alienation, feeling imprisoned in daily life, the mundanity of it all, feeling quite apathetic to everyday life, and then looking at the response to that, often leading to some kind of violent outburst or some kind of message in that tone. Something that I can definitely say with confidence about her work is that it is singular in terms of vision. I do not mistake her work for any other filmmaker. So in that regard, she has a very authentic voice in cinema and yeah, a clear vision. You know very quickly when you are watching a Chantal Ackerman film, make no mistake about it. Her filmography has been discussed a lot during the past few years when Jean Dielman was voted the greatest film of all time, according to Sight and Sound poll voters. This was an event that happens only once every 10 years and it pleased a great many people it also infuriated a great many people on the internet. And from my perspective, 
Chantal Ackman is a filmmaker that I still cannot really connect with all that much. Now I have tried and I was actually hoping that this set would be revelatory for me and that it would kind of flick the, the light switch and I would open up to the, the wonders of her films. Because in the past this one was the only film that I had seen of hers. I'd seen it a few times and I just could never connect with it at all. If you haven't seen this film it does very much deal with the mundane and the repetitions in daily life. And a lot of the film is just that. It is just watching someone going through the motions in their everyday life. For many people, this is monotonous. It is boring, uninteresting, uncinematic in terms of its flow and its editing, etc. And those are all quite valid points. And in fact, the people that do praise this film and Ackerman's work will say that that's exactly the point. The film is highlighting these central issues by using all of what I've just mentioned as a technique to get the point across. The trouble is up until now, I just haven't felt it. I completely understand everything that people say about the film, all the intellectualizing that goes on, all of the analysis, talking about the importance of the film, etc. I get all of that. It's just something that hasn't worked for me in terms of what I like in cinema. So, you know, I will keep these films around. I will keep revisiting them every now and again to just see if something connects, if that light switch gets flicked. But for now, you know, the films, they, they do just leave me a bit cold. But let's actually talk a bit about the set because you get three discs here which feature all of those feature films and the short films. The second disc in the set, which has Jean Dielman, is pretty much the same disc that is in the older release. It isn't a new restoration, so it's using the same source. So in that respect, if you have the older disc, you probably don't need to keep this around if you do get this set. You also get lots of special features and there is a booklet inside. So in terms of the package, it's very well put together, except for one issue, and it's that same issue rearing its ugly head that Criterion's authoring, the mastering process here, is just not great. In many instances you do see compression artifacts, macro blocking, it just rears its ugly head when otherwise it would be a great presentation of these films. Again this is not issues with the restorations, this is actually issues with how Criterion puts these discs together, or rather the authoring team that they work with, how they end up putting the disc together. It's a real shame because when you go to such lengths and effort to collect all of the materials, collect the films, the special features, create the lovely packaging, etc., to be let down in the final stage where you are mastering the disc, it's just something that I, I personally don't get and I don't get how these issues are not picked up in quality control because they stick out like a sore thumb to me. And maybe that's just because I watch an insane amount of Blu-rays. I've been looking for this kind of stuff for years and years, so it does stick out to me. But I notice it instantly. It could be that you watching this video don't notice these issues with the compression, for which I'm glad for you. I wish I was in that place where I could ignore them. So in that regard, you might be happy watching this set and not noticing the issues, but just know that they are there. You know, these discs are not perfect and they could very much be improved by just fixing one part of the process in making the discs. So I hope that has helped in terms of giving you some recommendations of films to check out, particularly the Roma set. I love those films. And also letting you know about some issues that might exist with these box sets. Remember, if you're in the UK and you want to get some Region A Criterion imports, go and check out Boutique Home Video now, where they have those Criterions on offer. If you'd like more Criterion recommendations from me, just click the video that's presented on screen right now. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you soon.